Lynn Juice here again with another Photoshop tutorial for you. And this time what I want to do is concentrate on showing you how I put this Run for Alfie poster together. Now those of you who follow the blog will know that putting this final image together from the onset was quite a challenge because of the bad weather and all that kind of stuff that we had going against us. So whereas at first I wanted to do one complete picture just with one single shot, what we actually ended up doing was combining two images together. And that's what I want to show you over this next series of videos, just to show you how we went up from having two pictures and ended up with a picture that you see in front of us. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to Photoshop. Now, what we'll do is we'll open up the very first photograph, which is the one we have with Alfie and his parents. Press F to get full screen. And I'm just going to reduce that down just a little bit and position it to the left hand side at the bottom of my screen. What I need to do next is to increase the canvas size so that we can then add in the second picture which contains the runners. Now to do that all I need to do is come over to my layers panel here and double click on the background layer like so. When I do that the new layer dialog box opens up here and if I just click OK what you'll see straight away is that this one here no longer has the padlock symbol on there and it says layer zero as opposed to just saying background. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is increase the canvas, and I can do that by pressing C on my keyboard, or just selecting the crop, the, um, crop tool from the toolbar on the left-hand side. And all I'm going to do then is just draw out a selection around the first photograph, and when we put a selection around uh, an image, we see these little grab handles here. And all I'm going to do then is just use these grab handles to drag out just a little bit more canvas so that we can work with putting the whole picture together and then just press enter so like so so we can see now we've got this checkered background around the original picture so all I can do then is I can then go and get the other photograph by going file place choosing the image and dropping it in like so now because of the challenges we had when we were doing this uh, particular picture because the rain coming down and so on and so forth we had to be really really quick and in fact when we took these individual portraits I didn't have a clue we were going to end up having to put the pictures together like this. So when we did this, there's different focal lengths taken on each of the pictures. There was slightly different exposures and so on and so forth. So that's why we had to do a few um, minutes of editing within Photoshop to try and get everything looking just right as if it was taken in one shot. Now, one of the challenges when we first of all put these two images together was quite obvious. And that was that the two guys, the sort of the heads of everybody, were completely out of proportion between the two photographs because we'd used different focal lengths. Now if I just reduce the opacity on this layer here and then drag it across and then zoom in, you'll see what I mean. You can see that the heads of the runners are considerably smaller than the photo originally taken of, of little Alfie and his parents. So what I needed to do then was just to sort of get everything in proportion so that it looked okay. So all, all I have to do for that was press uh, command or control T to get up the adjustment uh, bars here or adjustment handles on our picture hold down shift and then just drag out now by holding down shift it means that everything grows or contracts in proportion if I don't hold down my shift key and I use the adjustment handles here I can go all over the place and the pitch can be stretched in all kinds of horrible sort of ways that obviously are not realistic so we're going to zoom in, we're going to press Command or Control T and all I do then just a few times just drag up and then move the image down so that the guy, one of the guys, uh, the, one of the runners, his bottom of his chin lines up with Alfie's dad and then just drag up again and just keep doing that a few times until the pictures look relatively in proportion to each other and that looks about right to me. Heads look about the right kind of size. We'll press enter and then I'll just increase the opacity of the layer, the layer containing the guys who are doing the running back to 100% and we'll zoom out. All I want to do then is just reposition the pictures, I'll put that up to 100, reposition the pictures so that they then line up quite right, just like so. I'm going to put that right across and I'm going to overlap just a little bit and then just use my down arrow key just to line the top of the grass up here, like so. Uh, what we can do now is press C on our keyboard just to get the crop tool, just to get rid of some of this dead space. Now this empty canvas that we don't need, like so. Drag it down to there and press enter. And we're left with this image here. Clearly, <laughs> clearly there's quite a bit of a difference between the two images. As you can see now when I zoom in, this very definite line separating the two pictures. And that, like I said, was because there was slightly different exposure. I think it was roughly a stop difference in exposure between each of these two pictures. 
Now, thankfully, Photoshop can really help us out very, very quickly with this by blending these images so they look a little bit more as if they are one picture. But before we use a, a facility called Auto Blending Layers, what I need to do is the layer containing the runners we can see here, which is the top layer, it's got a little icon in it here, which, is, which basically means that this is a smart object. Now, for us to use the Auto Blend Layers, we can't use it on a smart object. So to get rid of that, making sure the layer that is the smart object is active, and you can see that by it being blue, like so, we're going to come to the top of the screen, go to Layer, Smart Object, and then just Rasterize. And what we'll see is that basically removes the smart object side of things and makes the layer a basic layer within Photoshop so that we can start doing a bit more with it. Hold down your Shift key, click on the remaining layer beneath, so both layers are now active, then go into the top of the screen choosing Edit, whoops, Edit, and then Auto Blend Layers. And that brings up this dialog box here. Leave everything as it is, just leave it as the default and click OK. And with a shake of a magic wand, a few seconds later, bang, Photoshop's then blended them together really nicely. So we can see there the sky between the two pictures blends virtually seamlessly so it looks as if they're both matching in there, both of the same exposure. All we need to do now is just to get rid of this uh, empty space just in the top left. So to do that, first of all, to keep things nice and tidy, we're going to come over and we're going to merge these layers together. And we can see at the bottom it says Merge Visible. Now if you hold down your Alt or Option key, depending on whether you're using Mac or Windows, hold that down, then click Merge Visible. What happens is it'll put a layer above the two, two original uh, layers, and that layer is actually a combination of the ones beneath it. So what we can do then is just get rid of them and throw them in the trash can. Now to get rid of this little, uh, or to fill in this little bit of sky, we're going to press M, which is our, for our marquee tool, which is the second one down on your toolbar, just on the left-hand side over here, rectangular marquee tool. And we're going to drag out to encompass that area, making sure that we just overlap slightly onto the sky that's already in the picture, like so. And then press Shift and Backspace, or Shift Delete, to bring up the Content Aware dialog box, and click OK. And after a few seconds or so, what we'll see happen is that Photoshop will then fill in that little bit of blank canvas there with some of the sky from around it so that it looks like we've got a complete sky in the picture. As you'll see any second now, there we go. Press Command or Control D on your keyboard to deselect and there we have it. Now the sky is not how we want it to be. So over the next two video sessions you'll see we'll do a little bit more work on the sky to make it how we want. But just to finish off part one, there's just a couple of things I'll do and that's removing some of the foliage at the bottom It's a little bit distracting. So we'll press Command or Control J on our keyboard just to duplicate the background layer. And we'll zoom into here, this will be the first one we'll move. And we'll press S on our keyboard to get the clone stamp tool, again which can be accessed from the left hand side on the toolbar. Hold down your Alt key just to select a little bit of uh, the sky above it, and then just paint away, taking time to paint away. Don't worry about being too accurate on this at the moment because there will be more things we're going to do. And I think we'll get rid of these two little bits down here as well. This little strand of grass just here, and these ones just in between one of the guy's feet just there, like so. And there's just some little smudge or some little dirt on the sensor there. So I'm going to press J on my keyboard to get the clone stamp tool. And we're actually going to use the uh, what should we use the patch tool. And we'll just drag out a quick selection just to cover those two little smudges there. Drag it across and then bang, and that's done. Press Command or Control D to delete that. Zoom out, and there we go. So that's part one complete. We've got the images combined. There's a few more things obviously we need to do, like adding contrast, improving the sky, and what have you. And uh, we'll do those in the next couple of videos. So I'll see you next time.